Good morning to our NBC. Good morning to our visitors. Good morning to our friends, our online uh, guests. We want to thank you so much for joining us on this morning for praise and worship. At the New Beginning Church, we just thank God for allowing us to be back in Houston from our trip. And we just thank and praise God for that. We're going to ask that you stand to your feet. And we're going to uh, start by singing the song, Come On, Let's Worship Him. Listen, we have come to praise the Lord. We have come to lift Him up. We have come. No. 
morning, saints. Good morning. Today I'll be reading from Psalms 103. All right. 11 verses. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives us of all our iniquities? Who heals all our diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who have are oppressed. He makes known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with you, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dwelt, dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy for those who fear him. Amen. 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 God is good. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you, dear God, for waking us today. We thank you, Father, for guiding us to this appointed place. We thank you, dear God. And as we thank you, Father, we also thank you for our pastor in his absence. Amen. We ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless him. Amen. Crown his head with wisdom and understanding, dear God. We thank you for it right thank now. You, oh, Heavenly you. Father, now that we we have a, a city in minister, uh, we ask it that you bless him. Amen. We ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you give him a word to tell your people this morning. We thank you for the word that is coming toward us, dear God. Oh, Father God, I just thank I lift you this morning, dear God. Oh, Father, because you have lifted me. I thank you for my family this morning, dear God. I thank what you have for everything that you have given me, dear God. I thank you. I thank you for my church family. I thank you for my automobile. I thank you for my wife that you put by my side, dear God. And I pray, dear God, that every man that's here today, dear God, and the Father, I pray for him, and I thank you for being a father. I thank you, Father, for being a grandfather. Oh, dear God, you touched me with many blessings. And I'm just so grateful today, dear God, yes, Lord. that you are my God and Savior. These and other blessings, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus. And thank God. just allowing us to be here and yes uh, we want to say uh, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the audience thank you so much we're going to uh, sing a song now that's called I Love Jesus He's my Savior when the storms are raging He's my shelter where He leads me I will follow because I love Jesus and He loves me we're going to ask that you help us sing that song I love Jesus, he's my savior, when the storms are raging, oh, he's my shelter, where he leads me, I will follow, cause I love Jesus. 
as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my Sister David says, how many of you know that your goodness is running after you and God is always running after us? In fact, that's part of the message today. First of all, let me give honor to God for allowing us this opportunity, this opportunity to wake up with new mercies. I want to thank Pastor Davis in his absence for the opportunity that he gave to this little servant to come and preach God's word. Sister Davis, happy birthday. And your company. And your senior. <laughs> Just to get a few preliminaries out of the way before we go to God and his word that he has given through this servant. Uh, I have a few people here who came to support me. Would my family stand, please? Amen, amen. I have some brothers in love. I have some sisters in love. A daughter, a brother. Amen. And my, I am not a pastor because that's a whole different calling. I am a minister. Like my uh, wife, my first lady, my only lady to wave your hand and Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you. And to the congregation of New Beginnings Church, this is an awesome ministry. Every time I come, I get more inspired. 
Sister Whitlock allowed me, uh, the deacon allowed me to go into the library and I was just blown away from the information and knowledge that God has put right here on Schumer Street. But let's not belabor the point. Let's get to the message that God intended for us to give today. The psalmist said that we sing of the goodness of God. They also sung, I love Jesus. Amen. One month ago, we celebrated Mother's Day, 2024. Yes. One week ago, we celebrated National Children's Day. Yes. Three months from today, we will celebrate Grandparents' Day. Yes. I call attention to all of these days on this Father's Day, 2024, to give notice that each and all that are gathered here Though today is Father's Day, this message is intended for all who are present. If you'll stand, our scripture text this morning is found in the book, Old Testament book of Judges. So this message is for grandparents, fathers, mothers, children, and adult children. Found in the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, very familiar passage 6 11 through 16 and it reads as such the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in the Ophrah that belonged to Joaz the Abarite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep from the Midianites when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon he said the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have given Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites together. Please consider with me. You may be seated. Please consider with me. The topic, hey, you, who, me, yes, you, let's go. Hey, you, who, me, yes, you, let's go. This morning, our person in the Bible was just an ordinary person. His name was Gideon. In fact, if we be honest, we have to say that he was actually less than ordinary. But God used him to do something and do some amazing things. The pattern that God uses with Gideon is consistent throughout the Holy Scriptures and that God uses today. God identifies the person he intends to use. The person questions whether God is talking to them. Then God tells them, yes, I'm talking to you. Let's go and complete the assignment. Biblical example. God is looking for a king to replace King Saul. David was overlooked by his father, Jesse, as a possible candidate for kingship until the prophet Samuel said or asked him, Are these all your sons? Jesse said, No. There's another son, the youngest, but he is tending sheep. You know the story. He became King David, a man after God's own heart. Present day example of God's pattern. Cesar Chavez and Dolores Herta, two ordinary farm workers out of Yuma, Arizona, who were called by God to stand up for the, the farm workers' rights. They founded the National Farm Workers Association, now called the United Farm Workers. God called two preachers, Reverend Bill Lawson and Reverend Manson B. Johnson to fight and make things better in the Houston Metroplex. But now, at least one person 
here today is asking, what does God's pattern, Gideon's life, and these people have to do with me? Today, June 16, 2024, God has an assignment for you. So when you leave here today, understand that God has something that he's called you to do too. My prayer that when you leave here today is that you understand the method in which God calls. Granted, some persons today are further along on God's assignment. And if you are here, use today's message as a refresher to mind you that God helped you. Now be patient with those who are not far along in hearing and obeying God's word. Walk with me as we set the scene. Remember that God is, has rescued Israel from slavery in the land of Egypt under Moses. God took care of the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness. Now, it didn't have to take them 40 years. It only should have took them three to four weeks. But because of their disobedience, it took them 40 years. And then he brought them to the land of Canaan, the land that had, promised, that had been promised ever since Abraham. Then under the leadership of Joshua, the Israelites crossed over into the land of Canaan. And lo by lo, they began to overthrow the people who were living there to take possession of the land. And they settled in the land, and it was a beautiful time with the children of Israel. God had given them a land of plentiful milk and honey. And after slavery in Egypt, and after the awful 40 years they spent wandering in the wilderness, it was wonderful for them to have the opportunity to live in the promised land. And for a while, things were great. But as is often the case, when things get easy, people tend to get a little lax. And so as time went on, the children of Israel got comfortable, and they stopped honoring and obeying the Lord. They stopped observing what he had told them to do. As a secular theologian says, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. They forgot it as God's plan, not just for bringing them out of the land of Canaan, but to have them as a unique people to show all the people around what a difference it makes when the Lord is their God. But unfortunately, the children of Israel began to lose their distinctiveness. It's true that God has promised them blessing, and he delivered on it. But he also promised them that if they would, did not live in obedience, and if they did not follow his commands, and if they did not continue to honor him, then things would not continue to go well for them. And that's exactly what happened. So what happened in the land of milk and honey? Gideon and his people sinned and disobeyed God, worshiping other gods and as proposed. And even though they knew the right thing to do, because of their disobedience, God allowed them to be taken into captivity. Their captives, the Midianites, were nasty, mean captives, raiding and persecuting the people, like Gideon and his people. God will allow us to be subjected to captivity when we are sinful, unrepentant, and persist on living in disobedience to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Some of us can relate to Gideon and his people in their captivity when we let things take hold of our lives that God never intended for us. Strongholds of fear, guilt, drugs, envy, gluttony, and disobedience breaks us and shatters us, and it makes us feel beat down. We go into hiding, isolation, willing to go along just to get along. Everybody's doing it, so I can do it too. Living status quo, even though we know what we're doing is wrong. We interact on our jobs, in our communities, and in, in our relationships with a I could care less attitude. We feel overwhelmed, and we believe that we have no way out of captivity. Wait a minute, let's put a pin in it. You do know that the person I'm talking about, Gideon, was a person who God used to get his people out of that cruel captivity. You do know that, right? God called Gideon and gave him directives and instructions that he used to defeat 132,000 Midianites with just 300 people. How did Gideon do it? Gideon was hiding in a hole in a winepress cave in the mountains. You see that on your, on your study notes. That, that 
is an unearthed wine press. You don't, you, don't, you don't shred wheat in a wine press. You shred wheat out in the open. But he was hiding in that cave. That cave would be covered over. He was hiding. He was gathering wheat, food, in secret. He was working in secret in his wine press hole, and his captives, the Midianites, wouldn't know that he had wheat and come and take it. What directions and instructions did God give this ordinary man to break out of his captivity? The same directives he gives to us. The same directives that he gave to a single mother who bought a house and raised five kids by herself. The same directives that he gave that grandmother and grandfather who survived the Depression, World War II, Jim Crow segregation, brought them home and sent four kids to college, babysit their kids, all on a single breadwinner saddle. Now, this is the piss poor part of the service. We have the left side, my left side, and we have the right side. Now, if you want to know the details of how Caesar, how Gideon, how Cesar Chavez, and our four parents overcome captivity God's way, what I want you to say is say, yeah, I want to know. Over here, say, yeah, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. I can't hear you. Say, yeah, I want to know. Over here, I want to want you. I want to hear. Say, yeah, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. Oh, that sounds better. I'm gonna have to stay on this side. Say, yeah, I want to know. Yeah. How did this man that's in a hole that God calls that he don't have anything that defeat 132,000 with 300 men? Hey, you, who me? Yes, you. Let's go. I would say. One, two, three, let's go, but that's another story. <laughs> Directive one, God always sees us. Yeah. Gideon realized that we should realize, that what we should realize, that God always sees us. It's right here in the scriptures. Verse 11 and 12, it said, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abbasite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep from the many nights. What that scripture tells us is that God sees us, but sometimes he don't even say anything to us. He just sits there and watches us, waiting for the time to speak, waiting for to see if our ears are open. Then verse 12, it says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, so we move, from the, we move to the angel of the Lord appearing, that he's coming to him in the flesh. He said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. How did grandmother do it? How did big mama do it? How did big daddy do it? He understood that God had called him a mighty warrior. He understood that God told him that I will be with you. No matter what circumstance or situation, I'll be with you. Hmm. We are never out of God's sight. Never. In our lowest, darkest moments, in the mountaintops moments, God always sees us. In whatever circumstances we find ourselves, God sees us. God seeing us has nothing to do with how many resources we have or the lack thereof. We can be filthy rich or broken naked, tall, handsome, and dark, vertically challenged or petite and pleasingly plump like me. But God sees us. We can be a liar or a man after God's own heart. God sees us. However, God is desirous of us to not be as the world sees us, but God desires us to see us through Jesus Christ, his son. We can become God who God declares us to be when we accept the son as our savior and live a life of obedience. That fact encourages me because it lets me know that God always sees me and is willing to meet me when I'm frightened and vulnerable. My hiding place can become my meeting place with God. The place where I look like a coward can be the place where I receive my commission to be a mighty warrior. That's where God wants me to be. Hey, you. Hey, you. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Directive two. First directive was he always sees us. Directive two, how do we become Gideon warriors in this world that we're dealing with? God knows our failures and forgives us. When God said God calls, 
He identifies the person, then he calls that person, and that first thing that person says is, who me? It's right here in verse 13. Gideon is asking, who me? It says, but sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to me, to us? Where are the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they did, when they, when they said? Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of the Midianites? God knows we messed up some things. Even if we may not tell ourselves and others the truth about what really happened. God knows that he will, God knows that he will try, that we will try to justify our present predicaments by blaming him, blaming others, blaming him for his unfulfilled promises. We may even talk about the, what resources we don't have and how we feel abandoned. God listens to Gideon as he listens to us and gently encourages, encourages Gideon as he does us. I interpret him to say, I hear all your excuses. You're blaming me and your feelings of inadequacy, but those don't matter to me. I am calling you to an assignment. Who, me? Yes, you. You may have failed before, but God is saying, I still have an assignment for you. Directive 3 in verse 14 and 16. God told Gideon to use what he had. Gideon, like us, still didn't understand. He's still talking about what I don't have, what I should have had, what I could have done, and what I think I need to do. And what if, if I would have been born with a silver spoon and all of that. But the Lord says to him, I want you just as you are. That's what he's saying to us. I want you just as you are with what strength you got, which doesn't amount to much. What does amount to a lot is that I will be with you. God says, go in the strength and that you have. I know it's not much at all. You are from the Manasseh tribe. You're in the lowest clans of the tribe, of that tribe. And then you're at the tail end of that family. I know you're Gideon. I know who you are, Gideon. You're scared and you're hiding. But you're the one I want because I'm looking for people that realize that the key is not what they have to offer. The key is that I have everything they need to do what I'm calling them to do. Let me repeat that. God is looking for those who understand that the key is that I have, he said, God, I have everything you need to do what I'm calling you to do. You see, the problem is this. When we bring all kinds of riches and resources to the table, sometimes we have the impression that our riches and our resources are going to win the victory. But fewer resources but the fewer resources we have, the more likelihood there's God is waiting for us and that we'll be willing to be dependent on him. When Gideon looked at himself, all he could see was a weak and frightened man from a pathetic little tribe in a God-forsaken corner of the world. He couldn't see past his weakness to God's transforming power. He didn't understand that one of God's great Joys is pulling people like Gideon, ordinary people out of wine presses and out of holes and pulling them to do impossible things to accomplish impossible victories against impossible odds. And so, patiently and tenderly but firmly, God assured Gideon, as he is assuring us today, I will be with you and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. question before us today. Hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. Let's go. Stop making excuses. 
mighty warrior. God has told you, I will be with you, mighty warrior. When you're facing your circumstances and situations, whatever they may be, God is telling you, I will be with you, mighty warrior. So stop making those excuses. I've given you your assignment. Use the strength you have, and I will add my strength, and together we'll win. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. God is with you, mighty warrior. I don't care if you make a straight A's or you make a B student or you're a C student. God is with you. He has an assignment for you. Go in your strength, and together we all win. Hey, David. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Who, me? Yes, you. Let's go. Go in the strength, your strength that he has. There are others in the room that I may not know your name. But God is saying, hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. The Lord is with you. Go in his strength and we'll win. Let's go together. You don't have to remind me that you came over on a slave ship. God is not concerned with that. He's saying, I see you, I'll forgive you, and I'll come along with you. Because in my weakness, he makes us strong. He accomplishes what he has that assignment to do. Go in the strength you have, and I will add my strength. Use what you have. Stop procrastinating. Stop worshiping those other gods and other people. Turn away from that addictive conference. Stop being so fearful. Scripture says, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Mighty warriors, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37 says, no, in all things we are more than conquerors through them who loves us. That means that before you get a problem, you already know that the problem could be solved through Jesus Christ. Oh, mighty warrior. We show and tell the world about God's plan for their lives. And we live as loving fathers, honest business owners, faithful pastors, sons and daughters to honor our fathers, mothers, and persons. <laughs> hey, you. Who you? Me. Yes, you. Great is he that is in with you. That is he that is within us. That he that is in the world. See, John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to steal and kill. But Jesus Christ says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. My grace is all you need. My power is greater when we are weak. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them. Of them? Because of them? No, for the Lord God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. My favorite scripture is in a situation, a circumstance that I am in captive because I put myself there or because I happen to be there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing that I need that the shepherd will not provide for me. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Even when I messed up, he will restore my soul and bring me back. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. See, he gives me the instructions to walk in the path of right. Now, I may decide that I'm going to go another way, but he leads me in the paths of righteousness for, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows, the shadows of those things that can be fearful. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows, yet I will fear no evil, for he is with me. I want to end with this. That if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, who said that I will be with you, mighty warrior, this is an opportunity to do that. Hey, you. Say that with me. Hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. yes, you. Let's go. Let me show you the power of that, how that works. There was a woman, and for the sake of the day, since it was Father's Day, we're going to say there was a grandfather who was riding with his family. And they were going down south. 
And as they were going down south, they ran out of paved highway and they went onto a dirt road. And when they got on the dirt road, there was lightning and thunder. And the son who was driving ran off the road and ended himself. Everybody was okay but him. And they looked around and all they could see far in the distance was a white house. So they got out the car, they took the injured person and the injured son over to the White House and they knocked on the door and the lady came to the door and said, may I help you? She said, yes ma'am, if you'll let me in, I need to use the phone. So the young daughter went in and used the phone and she was calling the doctor, call Dr. Jesus. If you're in a predicament like Gideon, call on Dr. Jesus because he sees you. He'll forgive you, and he'll tell you that you're a mighty warrior and that you can go forward. So she called the doctor, and the doctor wasn't there. He said he was out making his rounds. So the grandfather, we say his normal grandmother, but the grandfather, since this is Father's Day, he got out the car and he came, knocked on the door, and said, uh, how, how, how's, how's my son doing? Call the doctor, but the doctor's out of rounds. And she says, uh, Well, <coughs> may, may, do you have a closet? He said, Well, no. The lady said, There's a phone on there if you want to use a phone. No, she said, No, do you have a closet? Sometimes, when we're in certain situations, all we got to do is a steal away and call on that person who answers, call on that person who was talking to Gideon. All we got to do is just steal in that room. So she stole herself in that little room. She could barely, he could barely get in there because it was so cluttered. You know how our closets are. He could barely get in there. But he got in there and he said, start saying, come on in the room. Come on in the room. I, I mean, everybody outside, they were, they were listening, but they started singing with her. And she kept singing and kept singing like we can do today. That if we in captivity, we can call on Jesus and say, Jesus, come on in the room with us. Come on and show us how grandmother did it. Come on and show us how Caesar, uh, Caesar did it when he was just a lonely farm worker out having a fight, fighting the big conglomerate's farm leaders. Just come on in the room. We can just ask Jesus to come on in here with us. Come on in here with us. And everybody was singing and shouting and everything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, see, you don't know where the blessing is going to come from. But all you got to do is keep asking for the blessing and believing that it will come. Hey, you, yes, you, let's go. A knock on the door. And it was, somebody said, can I come in? I was just out making my rounds, and I just started to stop here. What we said, that we are not fearful that we know the problem can be solved before even the problem comes. The grandfather said, come on in the room. And you know what? Guess who was knocking at the door? The doctor was knocking at the door. I know everybody was looking around and saying, how did that happen? I have been in some situations. I'm sure that you've been in some situations that you looking around you say, how did you make it out of that? How did you make it out of, out of with, with, with a dime? I've been broke and away from home and didn't have money in, to put gas in my car. But I asked the lady at the service station, I said, is there a church around here? And she told me, yes, drive up that hill. And that person followed me to the service station and gave me some money because the credit card had, uh, company had tied up my money. What I'm sending to you today as I close, hey, you, who, me? Yes, you. Let's go. Let's go and do what God has assigned for us to do against insurmountable odds. There may be someone here today that hear this preacher say, who me? Yes, me. But you don't know who's calling you. I'm standing here today telling you that Jesus Christ is calling you. That he's calling you to surrender your life such that he can, you can truly be the mighty warrior that he's called you to be. He's calling you to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He
he's calling you to that opportunity to fellow, to refellowship with the Father. If there's any here today who do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you'll come. Secondly, we're calling today for anybody who may be without a fellowship, but may be out with, without a church home, that you could come and study and learn God's word. That you could live that abundant life that God is calling you to. If there are any, would you come at this time? watching you, he will forgive you, and then he'll send you to the assignment in your own strength, but he'll be with you. Amen, amen, amen. is walking the floor. It's, it's offering time.
shall not appear before the Lord empty handed. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessings of the Lord your God, which he giveth, has given you. We ask to invite those who are giving offering at Zell online, who are listening in line, that you give through lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or if you're mailing in your offering at Post Office Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for your tithes and offerings. We thank you for those who gave. We thank you for the understanding and the sacrifice, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for even blessing us to have something to give. We thank you and may the gifts be used for thy glory and thy honor to do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to thank our Reverend Ponder for that message. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We needed to hear that. I am here for your announcements on today. And uh, we have our June birthdays. So we have uh, Andrew Johnson. His birthday was on the 1st. Michael Irvin's birthday was on the 8th. Lula Richard on the 10th, and Carolyn Davis' birthday, I'm sorry, was on the 15th, which was yesterday, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, but we're excited about all the birthdays. So, Phil, would you please start making your way up here? All right, and Xanthony Long's birthday is on the 17th, Anna Garza's birthday is coming up this week on the 18th, we have Sophia's birthday is coming up on the 19th, and Blanca Gavan on the 24th, Jonathan Servan on the 26th, and we have Brandon Turner on the 29th. So we want to say happy birthday to all of the birthday people. So thank you. Uh, upcoming events, uh, music classes are still offered on Friday nights through this month and on Sunday mornings at, at 8 o'clock. So if you're interested in your child learning music, please see me. Our Bible listening journaling is going on, so make sure that you are continuing on with that. On tomorrow, we will start uh, week 25, which is Romans 4 through 8, chapters 4 through 8. Our next slide shows the donors, and uh, before he plays that, we want to thank each and every one of you all for your support and allowing us to go on our mission trip. So thank you so much. So we have a thank you from the children. Kevin. for everything and we truly truly want to say thank you for allowing us and giving us that opportunity to take these boys and girls up the road all right moving on to our summer enrichment music camp if you are interested in your child attending the summer hearts uh, music camp please fill out the registration form today and give it to me if you are in the audience or you can may email me the camp dates are July 15 through 19 the camp fee is $100 per student and it's going to be offered to the first 30 students who sign up. So NBC, Turning Hearts, sign your children up if you're interested. Next, we're moving on to our Weedy 2024 Scholarship and Awards Luncheon that's going to be held on Saturday, June the 29th at uh, 11.30 a.m. Our very own graduate, Hazel and Carter, will be receiving a scholarship for college from Weedy. The scholarship luncheon will be held at Greater Mount Zion Church Event Center. 
and it's held in Brazoria, Texas. The Tarny Hearts Music Ensemble is going to be performing at the luncheon. So we want to make sure that you all have an opportunity to support Hazelin and our youth performers. And if you are available to attend the luncheon, that includes the performers, the parents, as well as the NBC members, would you please let me know today because we have a donor that has, is going to pay for it. So let me know, first come, first serve. All right, and here at the New Beginning Church, we will celebrate all graduates from pre-K through college on Sunday, June the 30th, during the morning service. So each graduate should submit his name, her name to me, a photo, and also your future plans. Present that to me by next week, please. We want to say, uh, have prayer requests. Uh, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have. And that's Mark 11 and 24. We are still praying for Raynetta Weber and children, Alvin Powell, Zoli Scales Apartments, Cora Woods, Angela Presley, Larry Woods, Lula Richard, Marlene Studebont, Tommy Hemingway Jr., Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Herman Guillory, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Beverly Wallace, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeford, Brandon Turner, Arari Carey Spencer, Malaria Williams, Vivian Oslaha, Paula Hornsby, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Laborers for the Harvest and World Peace. Next, we have thank you to the fathers. We want to say happy Father's Day. And at this time, we're going to ask, ask the boys and girls to come up. You're going to present your fathers with a gift. And we're going to ask that all fathers stand at this time. Come on up, boys and girls. Now, I want to know why these children are still sitting down when I've asked them to come up, whether your father is here or not. I need everyone to come up here. Thank you. Just follow instructions the first time. The Lord going to bless you. Would you please get uh, the uh, your name? Look on there and get your name, and you're going to present that to your father. And then the other name, the other things on the table, you're going to present them to the men who are standing. they can figure it out because we did not rehearse it. Okay, now get the other things on the table, Aureli. Thank you. Just grab a few of them. And would you please go and give those to uh, the men who are standing. We want to say thank you for being godly examples to our children and everyone. We really appreciate you. Get one to uh, Brandon, please. We're just so excited to see so many men folk in the audience on this morning. So thank you all so, so very much. And one more treat for you fathers. At the end of the service, I want you to meet me in the foyer because I'm going to take your individual portrait in my studio, my outside studio, like I did with the women on uh, Mother's Day. Beautiful photo, so you'll get your photo and I will text it to you, okay? So thank you all so much. I, okay, that concludes our announcements.
Mr. Henry, keep remain standing. We want to say thank you so much, visitors, for coming and visiting with us today. We really do appreciate that. So thank you so much. And I will talk to you after service. Amen, amen. Well, I can go home and tell everybody who will listen. I teach all the way to Mississippi. Amen, amen. Just in closing, just remember the title and the scripture, Judges 6, 11 through 15. Hey, you, who me, let's go. Let's pray for the sick list. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you and to ask you for what we need. We don't take it lightly, Father, that we have this opportunity to pray. Because we believe that what we ask for, we will receive. Father, we pray for that list of persons on the sick list. We pray that your healing power visit them wherever they are. We pray, our Heavenly Father, we know that you will answer prayer. And we're waiting for the testimony that comes out of the prayer that you went, visited, and you healed the sick. Because you did it before, and you can do it again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand and our benediction. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Vision and mission statement. We are, we are uniting the church, church strengthening families, families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said,